Hey, welcome to Flight Report. This is Julian Mello, and in this episode, I bring you part two of The Ghoul, Building a Better Phantom Quad. As I mentioned in the first episode, this is built on a phantom case. Actually, it's called Opera. I know it's a play on word on phantom, phantom of the opera, from um, Ready to Fly Quads, White Spy in his store. I've uh, built the phantom uh, clone, let's call it the ghoul, and I've actually already made it. I made it at the beach and at my local park. Um, I'm in the process of figuring out how to uh, process video shot at 120 frames per second, which is a new feature on the GoPro 4. But as you can see, it came out really nicely. It flies really well. Um, it's very stable with uh, APM as a control, although it could use a little bit of tuning. Uh, what I'll do is I'm going to set up the auto tune feature to work with my switches on my radio, my FreeSky Tyrannus. I've uh, I've sort of uh, ghetto mounted the GoPro right there using the existing uh, top part of the GoPro packaging. So I've mounted my GoPro case here, the GoPro 4, um, and I've added an Immersion RC 600 milliwatt transmitter right there with, uh, with, a, with an antenna. So I will be showing you step-by-step uh, step how this was built, but this is not going to be an absolute step-by-step. Step. You, you are required to have some soldering skills and uh, figuring out how to connect your own radio equipment. Now, you, I'm using uh, FreeSky equipment, but you know if you have to... Uh, Spectrum or Futaba or high tech or anything else, the channels are going to change on you. So, um, this is not going to be uh, an absolute step by step. Um, also, please refer to the APM instructions, A APM uh, the documentation to be able to uh, plug the stuff where it's supposed to go. Um, and, like I've mentioned before, I'm flying this on a uh, 5200 milliamp uh, three cell multi-star uh, pack from from uh, Hobby King. This is a 10C pack, so it's really low on the C rating, but it's high capacity. I flew it for about 20 minutes, uh, and it, it did just fine. Um, didn't have any inconveniences. So, I'll be showing you step by step. I did record with my iPhone um, the little steps and what I had to do to fit everything in here um, the way it's supposed to. Uh, so, here it goes. Okay, so here's a spread of uh, the components that I'm going to use on the build of the Ghoul, which is a much better Phantom. As you can see, the shells have been painted black, uh, flat, uh, flat black, matte black, um, just on the on the on the outside, not on the inside, um, as well as the the legs and this uh, the door. Um, so one of the challenges here is going to be trying to fit this battery, which is a multi-star uh, 5200 milliamps three cell in here through the door. So I think I'm going to have to cut this section of the door with a Dremel so that the battery can fit through there. Another thing, uh, let's see, these, uh, these, these ESCs, which are flush with Simon K, with Simon K firmware, they go in here, and they also have LEDs, as you can see right there. And these LEDs, uh, you can actually select which color by shortening these uh, these little pins right there. So right now, I believe uh, the one in the middle is shorted. That means that uh, this is a green, uh, a green, uh, green LEDs. Now, one of the um, thing with the phantoms is that um, DJI seems to do this where uh, the rear LEDs are green and the front LEDs are red. So if the copter is facing towards you, that means that, um, that there's a problem. Now, let's see, where's the front of this? Now, I'm going to put these, uh, this LED array back here um, to show me the status of the APM, ARM, and GPS lock and a bunch of other functions. So I'm going to have to figure out a way to put it here. Also, um, this is the GPS which will be mounted on the top of the top shell uh, somewhere here with probably a double-sided tape. 
and I'm going to be using this uh, L9R FreeSky long range receiver so it'll probably go somewhere around here all right now on the main section uh, let's put this you see in there um, this is the um, opera plate now this has a current sensor built in uh, BECs and uh, the power distribution um, and even a USB sort of connector there so this goes in here right there the problem is that it won't fit with the, with the battery so I'll probably raise it a bit like that so um, I'll keep you updated as, as, as we continue with this build okay so a quick little update in order to accommodate this, uh, this battery I've had to open up uh, and remove some material from the back cover of the battery so as you can see I've removed the material from here and from the bottom section and now the battery fits in perfectly alright so now I've installed the the battery cover the battery door and I've installed these uh, little screws one there one there and now on the bottom so just give me a quick second there we go and now this screw goes here on the bottom portion and uh, there it goes so now the door has been enlarged to accommodate this bigger battery and it should fit now it's gonna be tough to film it with one hand but uh, yeah it fits perfectly in there nice even with the velcro bottom so uh, to summarize I removed some material from this door removed the material from the top portion let's see where am I staring at okay I removed the material from this part top portion and from the bottom portion and the door closes also so let's uh, check that the door snaps into place there you go yeah, another thing that I've noticed is that with the battery all the way in as you can see it's right there at the border the door will not close so next step is I'm going to remove some of this material so that I can shove the battery all the way forward okay so I've removed material from this area right here and this area over here let me get a little more detail I did that with the Dremel tool so now the battery fits through the battery cover I can shove it all the way back and uh, the plug will go somewhere in there plug it in and then the door will close like so so there we go the battery situation is resolved right, the next issue is to tackle the battery clearance like I said before once the battery is in and I've got this plate uh, there was not, not enough clearance so what I've done is I've added these little spacers these uh, are from a bag of these prop things that I have had um, just a bunch of these little things uh, prop adapter prop spacers so I grabbed one of these two of them and I placed them here now let's see the results let's see if that actually works okay now the definite test I've screwed those long screws in here there's four two three and four with these uh, those spacers that I was talking about earlier there they are and now let's see if the battery actually fits I'm doing this with one hand so be patient please beautiful fits nicely with a tiny bit of clearance so that works awesome so when you're building yours just remember to add some spacers there um, and this is about I don't know uh, a couple of millimeters two or three millimeters four millimeters to that space so that this plate can accommodate the battery okay next step in the process is to install these uh, the ESC's right there it's just sort of in place right now now they like I mentioned before they have LEDs on the bottom and you can change the color of the LEDs uh, by changing a jumper configuration somewhere over there uh, so what I'm going to do is well I've actually got 
uh, two reds and two greens. This is a, a red one. Now, uh, DJI likes to put the red one in front. So their logic is if the copter is looking at you, then you know red because it's going towards you. I don't like that logic. I would rather have red in the back um, because red in the back means stop lights like, like a car. So if I see it flying and I see red lights, that indicates to me that that's the back of the copter and the green is front. So that's that's the way I'm going to do it. So what I'm going to do is install the the ESCs, solder them up to the power, and we'll go from there. Okay, so a quick little update on the the way I install the ESCs. Now uh, the ESCs I had to double side tape them on because I couldn't find uh, screws that would work in the hardware package, but that's okay. Um, that works. I already soldered. Uh, two of them right there uh, verifying that the motors were in the right orientation so um, the this one and this one's installed uh, now I'm working on this one another little note is that I noticed that the battery when inserted would sort of uh, jiggle around so what I've done is I've added a strip of this uh, Frost King stuff from uh, Home Depot it's half inch thick um, and I just uh, I add, I'm gonna add added a piece there. I'm gonna add another piece on the other side, and that's uh, so the battery doesn't jiggle. So this is the stuff. It's self adhesive. So I'm gonna shove it in there. Let's see if I can focus better. Yeah, I'm gonna shove it in there, but I have to do it with both hands. Okay, that foam strip has been inserted on both sides. Now let's see how the battery uh, fits. Beautiful, beautiful. Okay, so the battery is in there with, and you can see the, the two um, strips of foam in there, cushioning the battery. So it's perfect, the battery doesn't jiggle anymore. Okay, so just to explain this a little better, I've um, hooked up the motors to the ESCs, as you can see there, uh, making sure they're rotating in the right direction. Um, this motor rotates counterclockwise, this one rotates clockwise so before I, um, I I tested and it rotates in the wrong in the right direction so to explain a little further uh, I connected the positive lead from the ESC to the positive lead on the power distribution board same thing with the negative and I've done that with uh, so far three ESC's also the signal wire that goes there plugs into this N3 so then all the motor leads plug into there so it's going to be a really clean installation once I get the flight controller installed okay quick update all the ESC's have been placed uh, the motors have been soldered um, I've also interfaced with the current sensor and I've epoxied around uh, I just matched the pinouts of the board with the pinouts on the mini APM. I've also done the same thing for the motor outputs and here. So, and from here it goes over to the motors. It's a little bit uh, different um, the way they're labeled. Uh, an APM is supposed to be one, two, three, and four. So I had to rearrange the order of one and three. But other than that, the wiring is the same. Another thing that I've had to do, and this is regarding the uh, LED display, the, 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 the four LEDs, I've uh, wired them up correctly. I tested it, but I had to open up a little door here. It looks bad, but I will cover that and make that look prettier with some shoe glue. So, um, oh, and the APM is also a double double-sided taped onto the board okay so everything is wrapped up with the quad APM is mounted the uh, free sky receiver is in there one antenna is in this orientation the other antenna is in that orientation power connector everything's tested I'm going to put the lid on it uh, which has the GPS on here and it has to be in that orientation so when you flip it north or the front of the quad is uh, is that way.
like that. So the connector has to go up front. Um, just seal it up, connect everything, and test. Now another thing is the uh, the LEDs. I will uh, fix this up. It has a blue light and a red and um, and a white one. The uh, blue is for GPS. When this is locked, when the blue is solid, that means that there's a GPS lock. Now I chose it to be blue because blue equals sky. So easy there. When this one is on, when, when they're all solid, it means that it's ready to fly. So uh, I'm going to seal it up and uh, I'll take it for a test flight. Okay, well there you have it. The Ghoul. It has a mini APM inside. It has a 5200 three cell multi-star battery in the compartment. GPS, OSD, uh, T motors, and these are exactly 22, 12, 13, 980 KV T motors. And these are 9 by 4, 5 uh, HQ props. This is a Phantom shell sold by White Spy on uh, readytoflyquads.com. This is a little problematic sometimes to close. Okay, there we go. And, um,. It has these uh, LED indicators in the back, blue for GPS, green ready to go, and the yellow is armed. I will be doing a uh, maiden flight very soon. Uh, although I did fly it outside, it's uh, it's really dark. Um, but it, it flew well. Uh, also, it's got a Simon K ESCs, 20 amps, and it's got uh, lights on the bottom. Now it's opposite to what they have at DJI. Red in the back, green in the front, which makes more sense to me since the black backlights of cars are red. Um, so that's why I put the, the those in the back. There it is. It's uh, it's blinking because there's no GPS signal in here. The, when the blue is steady, that means that the GPS is locked. Uh, as you can see, it's got red on the bottom and green on the other side and, uh, well if I've missed anything I will have it in uh, the full article at flightreport.com the, the link is in the description below um, I'll have more details of the th things I might have missed while I was while I was building and recording so uh, please uh, please uh, check that out also uh, I'm in the process of processing the video for the maiden flight for part three of this video and if you have any questions, please let me know. Leave a comment here or on flightreport.com. I'm Julian Mello, and thank you for watching. And don't forget, please subscribe to the channel for more videos and, uh, and cool stuff like this. Thank you.